Tomato, tomato, potato, potato, Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, Ableton Live, are all recording softwares the same? Some would argue yes. In fact, I'd be one of them as the goal of music production software is to simply aid you in the production of music. But the way various softwares go about that process can be vastly different from software to software. I'll start by telling you what I use and then go over major differences between the top DAW platforms. And uh, just so you know, DAW is a geeky term we use for digital audio workstation, uh, by the way. If you're curious about a specific DAW, use the chapter markers below to navigate towards an area you're interested in. Let's do it. Realistically, I've used all the major recording platforms out there at one point or another. When I first got into audio when I was 14, I used Cool Edit Pro. Uh, I really liked the easy workflow, uh, honestly, even though I really had no idea what I was doing. It was the spark, though, that helped push me down this career path, aided by an awesome teacher. Thank you, Dave Baumgartner. Uh, shortly thereafter, I was recording demos with my band in a local studio that used Motu's digital performer software. For the time, it was actually pretty revolutionary as it had a sleek graphical user interface and great plugins and really streamlined the digital multi-track workflow. And that manual had to be like 800 pages with it. It's insane. Uh, we got really good results with it. And that was the first time I realized that, hey, we don't have to record to tape to get a really solid recording. Then uh, a few years later in college, I started using Pro Tools for the coursework we were doing. And I spent a lot of time immersing myself uh, using automation and the general workflows, and they just made sense to me. And I enjoyed doing Foley work, actually, and uh, just general editing work in Pro Tools. And to this day, Pro Tools is still my primary uh, digital audio workstation. But after college, I did use Apple Logic for a time. And Logic was an interesting creative tool for me. I was able to write and record more songs with Logic than any other platform, even Pro Tools. Uh, I think I've recorded somewhere between 50 and 100 song ideas and songs in the span of just a few short years. So really powerful creative tool, but I actually hated the workflow for some reason. And I'm still not sure to this day what it was about it. Maybe the smart tools just didn't work the way I wanted them to, I don't know. Uh, but it was intuitive and not at the same time for me. I don't really get that, but it came with some of the best stock plugins and loop libraries of anything out there. And I still think it's one of the best values for the money in this era of endless subscription and uh, freemium products that are out there that just don't give you a whole lot for the money. I've started to dabble more and more in Universal Audio's Luna product. To me, it has a logic-like vibe in the sense of workflow. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a positive for me as I still tend to prefer Pro Tools, but there's a certain creative freedom in using Luna that I like with my UAD plugins. I find myself experimenting with sound a lot more in Luna, and I think that's a good thing. Let's talk about all the most popular recording programs and who the target customer might be for each one of them. Okay, Pro Tools is still the big player in the industry. Now, with their very unfriendly consumer pricing, I suspect that their lead will begin to dwindle over the coming years, and at some point they'll probably be dethroned unless they do a major course correction. For now, uh, I, I still do use it for the ease of use when it comes to using the editing tools. They're really second to none, and it's literally the professional standard in the marketplace. So if you are working with commercial players, commercial studios, commercial entities, 
you can rest easy knowing that they probably have Pro Tools too. I think I read something like 60 to 70 percent uh, of di uh, digital audio workstation users out there that would consider themselves commercial do have or have access to Pro Tools. Many years ago, uh, there were annoying track limitations and upgrade kits that you needed to buy to make Pro Tools work well. If you were doing commercial work, you'd also potentially be buying DSP cards, which are digital signal processing cards, like the Pro Tools HD Excel cards, or these days Pro Tools HDX cards, or for the really old people, the Mix system cards. That isn't so critical these days, and uh, the $599 Pro Tool software is really quite capable. Pro Tools doesn't really come with a lot of compelling plugins unless you do keep a current subscription or active update plan, and uh, it doesn't come with a really compelling library of loops or anything. But that's okay because there are tons of great third-party items you can use to get where you'd want to be anyway. Killer features of Pro Tools. Uh, it's an industry standard. That's a killer feature because it means you can share with your friends and colleagues easier. Ease of editing, it's reliable. The mix engine sounds great and it won't drop samples or if it does, it stops the recording. So that all lends itself to really good audio quality. I think for a lot of Mac users, logic is a logical choice. Sorry, I had to do that. Uh, it comes with amazing tools right in the box in terms of plugins and loops, and it's really cheap in the world of professional audio recording. $199 buys you entry, and furthermore, if you get a new Mac, uh, in the future you can get an upgrade for free. In fact, you can install it on all of your computers um, that have Apple's operating systems because let's be honest, logic is a rounding error or something even lower than a rounding error on Apple's annual sales. So we can't fault other companies like Avid or Steinberg uh, or others for needing to charge more. Um, but for what this is, I really do like it. I've never been a huge fan of the editing workflow overall, as I mentioned, but it's not bad. Uh, you can record full bands just as easily as you can work on MIDI data or do sound design. Logic Pro is one of my top buys on the Mac side of things. Killer features uh, within Apple Logic, it's price, uh, that's amazing. The included plugins really are stellar, great reverbs, um, great EQs, just great sound design tools. Uh, they do give you the free upgrades indefinitely, as I mentioned, and licensing ease of use. That, that can't be understated. A lot of people are annoyed with iLock licenses. I get it. Uh, they're annoyed with the Steinberg key and softwares that make you do that. So with Apple Logic, bam, it's out the window until you get a third-party plugin that requires the same licensing. Next, let's talk about Studio One. Uh, PreSonus Studio One is a relative newcomer when it comes to DAW applications, but they didn't mess around. In fact, the team that is working on it actually worked on Nuendo and Cubase years ago. So that audio engine is actually you know, developed by the same people or was developed by the same people that work on PreSonus Studio One. So they have a very intimate knowledge of building recording software. Studio One uses cutting edge features and has a pretty easy editing workflow. And I feel like they've been pushing the envelope the hardest the last five years in terms of adding features that their users want. So they're very responsive to their user base. You can also get the PreSonus Sphere if you're into the whole subscription thing to get access to tons of sounds, Studio One, plugins, and the meaning of life itself. It's a wonderful, worthwhile thing for sure. Studio One, unlike Apple Logic, is also cross-platform. That's a fancy way for saying that it works on a PC or a Mac computer. This and the fact that there is a lot more active development on Studio One is why it's suggested over Apple Logic for the vast majority of users out there. Killer features, 
Great value with lots of updates and reasonable pricing structure for buying the software or upgrading. And it does work really well with Studio Live boards as well as PreSonus audio interface hardware. They also have a lot of cool virtual instruments like Ampire too. Uh, there's a lot of promising stuff happening here on the development side. Cubase has been around for a long, long time. It's really one of the early DAW programs out there and it has a great user base and they're always adding interesting features to the program. They also include a really nice suite of included plugins in Cubase Pro. Uh, last time I checked, they had over 85 specific plugins in that version. I like that they push the envelope with the software. Uh, it's a bit pricey potentially, but you can upgrade without a subscription, which is really a nice feature these days. And they also have really good MIDI support and even score editing in the most recent version. Uh, it also ties in nicely with their hit music notation software called Dorico. And it has great, uh, a great harmony plugin and it has a nice way of editing various takes with their lanes feature. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it really. I don't personally use it. I never really have. That's the one I've never gotten deep into, but I know a lot of people who happily do. Ableton is becoming a more seasoned DAW now. It's really been around for what, like 18 to 20 years or something. Um, but Ableton is a unique animal. It has the same core features of other recording softwares, but it does things in its own Ableton-y way. I have to admit that I personally have a tendency to get a little lost in the workflow, but people just starting out, or I've noticed younger people in general, really tend to like working in Ableton Live. It has an awesome collection of instruments and sounds, especially in the Ableton Live Suite collection. It's actually very pricey. In fact, one of the more expensive DAWs that we um, are talking about here at I think 795 or so, but it's different enough that I think the price is warranted. It's very unique out there. The way you can use the clips is pretty huge and Ableton is actually really conducive to integrating a studio setup with a live setup, hence the name. Uh, Ableton is ultra light and efficient in terms of uh, the demand placed on the computer and you'll find launching backing tracks with live bands, you'll find churches using it as well. Uh, it really fits a nice niche out there and I'm thankful it's out there. Uh, it's really helped evolve things, especially live music for um, the weekend warriors out there or churches or other more ambitious bands out there. Oh, and did I mention with Max for Live, you can control a robot with the software. That's pretty awesome. Thanks for checking out episode four. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down below. And next week, we'll be talking about choosing an interface and converters. I'm Ryan Sloan for The Gear Cage. Email me at hello at thegearcage.com with any questions and you stay classy, YouTube.